Hello, my name is Ian McCall and today we are going to have another in the series from the Dermoscopy Made Simple website. This video is going to cover congenital nevi. Now, if you're looking at these uh, lesions, well first of all, uh, they're usually present at birth, although some may not come out for a month or so afterwards. And some people believe that congenital nevi, uh, you know, come out much later in uh, in life. But most of us believe that they're there at birth on the first month or so. Um, they are often very well defined, have a well defined edge, and as far as the surface goes, it can be smooth, it can be rough, it can be papillomatous. They can have a single color, or they can be speckled with uh, multiple colors. And the big thing about them is they vary tremendously in size. You can have very small congenital nevi, and you can have congenital nevi that cover half the trunk or more, the giant congenital nevus. And there would appear to be a bit of a difference between the cells that are in both. The smaller congenital nevus seems to have fairly mature uh, melanocytes that uh, carry very little risk of ever developing melanoma, whereas the much larger lesions may have some form of stem cell within them or some form of immature melanocyte or nevus cell that's more capable of uh, forming melanoma. However, that's another issue. Dermatoscopically, they're composed of packed clods or lined reticula, or a combination of both, and we'll show you examples of this. Sometimes you can also get lines branched, uh, particularly the edges. Uh, we've said the clods that you're going to get within them can be various colors, but particularly white, orange, and brown. And any lines that you're going to get uh, with the lines we take are usually thick brown. Now the thing about congenital nevi is they don't vary much with age. They don't evolve like other benign nevi, uh, you know, where the clods change into lines reticular. The other thing is that hairs may be seen in these nevi, and you can get um, peri hypo and hyper pigmentation associated with these hairs. So let's have a look at some of these lesions. Here we have a nice big congenital nevus, papillomatous, um, some papules studied in the surface, relatively uniform color. And if you look at it uh, dermatoscopically, you find that there are these small areas of compound nevi within the congenital nevus. This is the dermoscopy of uniformly packed brown clods in the background here with these uh, compound nevi uh, within it. How about another more typical one? Here's your nevus here rather large uh, lesion, central papillomatous raised area. And when you look here at your dermoscopy, some uh, brown and black clods packed together here in the center, um, a bit more diffusely packed as you go towards the periphery, and then you can start to see the vessels that are involved in uh, congenital nevus. And they're curved vessels. Let's make that just a, a little touch bigger, see if we can see them. One more. Oops. Well, that's certainly a curved uh, vessel. I'm not sure you could say a lot of those are curved, but they're certainly not linear, uh, regular vessels. They're not serpentine vessels. And uh, yeah, there's a, a curved vessel. There are some dot vessels actually in this um, as well. So, vessels, classically they're described as the curved vessels that you'll, you'll see in, uh, in a congenital nevus and in a, a dermal nevus. Let's have a look at this one here. A bit uh, large, the dermoscopy here. There we go. Now you've got these packed globules. Um, a central globular pattern here, and then as you go out to the periphery, you've got these lined reticula. So a peripheral lined reticula and a central globular pattern. 
Um, this is your globular component here, and then when you get out to the edges, you can start to see the lines reticular around the outside. So, so it's generally a mixture of both clod-like and uh, lines retic make up your classic congenital nevus. Now, there are other clods that you can see within congenital nevi. Now, when you look, there was this one here. There's actually a little hair coming out of that. Um, there you can see it uh, here. But you might look at these and say, OK, these are clods. They're dark brown clods, but they're not packed together. And in point of fact, these probably represent dark keratin-filled crypts on the surface of this. So sometimes they can look a little bit like um, seborrheic keratosis in that respect. But this one you can see you've got a lot more of your curved vessels. They're easier to see in this one than perhaps they were before. Let's just enlarge that again and just uh, have a little quick look. There we go. These are better curved vessels, I think, than we, uh, than we saw before. More curved vessels, more curved vessels. And these are the dark clods, probably keratin and crypts on the surface of the uh, congenital nevus. And our next image, you know, just again, just showing you the different surfaces. Look at these, a very papillomatous surface, very packed clods uh, here. And again, some brown clods in these areas here. Um, which again are just keratin filled crypts, um, spaces between these uh, papillas, papillomata surface. There's a very well defined um, lesion here. Now you can see virtually no lines reticular around the edge of this, and it's similar if you just look at the structure of this. It's papillomata right up to the very edge here. So very much a globular type pattern. And here's another one. Um, this is the sort of size of lesion that you commonly see, certainly, uh, certainly um, papillomatous, a little bit raised on the surface. And you look, and then all these packed clods. So it's a very um, uh, specific pattern, I think, for congenital nevi. We uh, usually don't have much trouble in recognizing them. We said before that um, there are different sizes of congenital nevi, and the larger they are, um, the more they may have these residual stem cells that are mature melanocytes. And in fact, if a melanoma is going to develop in these, it often develops quite early in life, you know, before the age of 10. And they can be difficult to pick up because they're often deep here in the dermis. And so it's difficult to see them even when you're examining these patients uh, regularly. So. Uh, a giant congenital bathing trunk nevus is more likely to predispose to melanoma than a much smaller lesion. There's also a condition that may be associated with this, especially if they've got a lot of other smaller nevi, uh, congenital nevi, called the neurocutaneous nevus syndrome. And this is where an individual has uh, abnormal um, melanocytes and nevus cells in the leptomeninges in the brain as well as these giant congenital nevi and multiple, what they call satellite congenital nevi. And they can develop a melanoma in the brain. They have to have MRIs done, uh, magnetic resonance imaging scans, both uh, in the first year of life and uh, then approaching puberty, because those are the times when they are liable to develop melanoma in those areas. And though we've said melanoma is more likely to develop in large congenital nevi, I think we have to show you this image again from Stereos Minas from the Scans, uh, Skin Cancer College blog. There's a pinkish congenital nevus that this lady had, and then she developed this pink nodule. And here you've got some polymorphic vessels. This one does show the curved vessels nicely of the surrounding congenital uh, congenital uh, nevus, and then the melanoma, the pink nodule that develops within it. So you can get melanoma developing within small congenital nevi as well, although again, it is very rare. So congenital nevi, fairly typical um, clinical and uh, dermatoscopic pictures. Um, and it's worthwhile just trying to separate them from seborrheic keratosis sometimes. 
but uh, as I say, the history of the lesion having been present from birth or very shortly thereafter is enough to uh, give you the diagnosis. Thank you very much.